Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I am your host, Renee Bauer, and I am super excited to have this chat with my guest today. So let me introduce you to Petya Kolobova, and her name just like rolls off the tongue. So (laughs) I think the entire interview, I'm just going to use your full name. So Petia is a devoted self-love advocate who offers practical tips and tools on how to gain and maintain a healthy body, self-confidence, and spiritual well-being. She grew up feeling unloved and unworthy, and after 18 years of destroying herself with an eating disorder and a constant search for someone or something that could make her feel better, she decided to make it her mission to help others. She's the founder and CEO of Unapologetically Abundant, a purpose and passion-driven company where she empowers other women to remember their own inner strength and confidently create a life that feels amazing on the inside, not just looking good on the outside. So welcome, girl. How are you? So much for having me. And oh my goodness, you're like the first person ever who said, I want to keep repeating your name. Most people are like... (laughs) Oh my gosh, I don't know how to pronounce it. How do I say it? So I'm really like buying for you. Amazing job. And you pronounce it really like, <laughs> so naturally. Like, well, it, I will be honest. I listened to your podcast because Petia has a co- podcast as well. So I listened to it to get the correct pronunciation. And then it was like Petia Kolobova. I'm like, ooh, I like that. <laughs> You are amazing. Like truly ready. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So let's just jump in. Uh, your your mission is to help women. And you came from a place where you were sort of stuck and just not feeling like your best self. And you decided to change things up and dedicate your life work to helping people move past that place that uh, you were at. So how did that happen. Can you just tell a little bit about what drives your passion for this work? Absolutely. So to make the story really short, you know, we can go for hours and hours talking about ourselves, but to make it really short and to the point is that I created something that I really needed myself because not only I was living in survivor, I was like fighting for survivor because I was in toxic relationship. I was struggling with eating disorder, body image, hating myself, hating my body. And when I was 18, I attempted for suicide. And um, when I was 27, I was getting back into this dark place. Like, why am I even here? I'm unlovable. I'm unworthy. And of course, you don't think yourself in these words. That's when you're on your journey when you know, but I really felt like crap. And I was always looking for the love on the outside of me for, you know, outsourcing my worthiness and happiness in others. I always felt like I need somebody. So I feel full. And so when I was around that age 26, 27, when I was again feeling this darkness in my life, I'm like, oh my gosh, if something doesn't change us, I know like this will kill me. Either my eating disorder slowly and surely because it was really bad back then, or it's going to me not attempting, but really committing the suicide. You know, it would be like once you, something doesn't work out once you learn. So now you know, right, how to do it. So I was in a really dark spot and that was the time that I really tapped into looking for help. And you know, like 10 years ago, it wasn't as easy as it's now, like type it on Instagram. And then you have like 10 influencers, like doing the thing, right. That you are struggling with back then I was looking at Google, like how to stop suicidal thoughts, how to be happy, how to, um, overcome eating disorder. And luckily I find Louise Hay And that was when the seeds were really planted of hope and possibilities. It didn't change my life, of course, from day to day. I was struggling for almost three decades, but she gave me hope that life can be different. She's like, was older lady who was teaching about self-love and self-healing. And I was thinking to myself, well, if lady in her eighties can be this vibrant and living a good life, maybe I could change something. So that was when I really started to shift. What is one thing about her teachings that really impacted you? I actually have, I'm going to admit, I have her book sitting in the corner of my to be read books and I haven't cracked it yet. So just give me like one or two things that really resonated with you about Mm. her work. 
Mm -hmm. So um, it depends what book do you have, right? Because some books we are called to like, it's a perfect timing and some books are just sitting on the shelf and waiting to when we need them. But the first thing that I learned from her, it's when I was listening to her YouTube video was um, when she says, go to the mirror and say, I love you. I didn't even lift my booty. I didn't love myself. I didn't even like myself. I didn't accept it myself. So I was like, oh, we got a problem. Like that was the first time when I'm like, oh, I want my boyfriend to love me. I want my family to love me. I want my friends to love me. But I couldn't love myself. I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel good. So that was the first thing. And the second thing was also um, on your body, like, psychologically like how it shows up on your body like your diseases right like when you're for example afraid of future and money it's pain in your lower back when you're afraid that you're not going to be secure it's your knee you know and, and like many things like that i really um i think it's from her book you can heal your life she is really saying like where is the pain in your body and how does it uh ties into the emotions that was like a a huge thing for me back then because I'm like, okay, emotions, one thing, body, one thing, right? But your emotional level and how you're feeling really shows up in your body, on your skin, on your gut, everything shows and it's emotional. So that was a big breakthrough for me. So that's fascinating because this is, this is new to me. So you're saying that something that's going on externally, some sort of stressor will show up as like an ache or pain yep. in your own body. Absolutely. And it really, she explains it so beautifully. Like, you know, like, why is it the right knee? Why is it the left knee? Why is it, you know, your headaches or your back or your mm -hmm. upper back or your toes, like uh, skin conditions, you know, and so many things, or even like, um, like problems with your um, re uh, reproduction organs, you know, like um, not feeling worthy, not feeling lovable, you know, and like having uh, infections, like what does it mean? Mean and what does it tied into and for me anytime when I look at it oh my gosh girl sometimes very uncomfortable true really whoa like my mind just was like blown open because this is so this is it's such an interesting concept so what is the name of that book because I'm I want to pick that uh, one you up. can heal your life okay I don't think that's the one I have mm -hmm. so I'll have to look at that one yeah so, it's, it's really amazing so uh, you talk about um, on your website being an abundant super attractor. What does that mean? It's a beautiful question and I never got it before. Thank you for your originality. I loved it. And <laughs> I was just know, trying to trip you up. <laughs> you so no, good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's such a great question. You know, what does it mean? And for me in the past, I was thinking that when I have money, I will be happy. And then I had my first business and I started to make money, you know, five figures and I wasn't happy. I'm like, what's wrong with me? So I really started to tap into the concept of abundance and prosperity. And I realized that it's not only the money, but it's about how we are feeling about our life in, in like the abundance sphere. Like how are your relationship? How is your health? How you're sleeping? How are your habits? How are your routines? Like for me, abundance really means that I am attracting all the feel, uh, feels and things that are perfect for me and good for me. And it's beautiful because when you really align with who you really are, the things that are meant for you will come and then you are living in abundance. You're not stressed mm -hmm. and in scarcity. So many of my clients, they come to me and there's like a scarcity of time, right? Like, I don't have time. I have so many things. I'm so busy. And it's all scarcity. We all have 24 hours. Well, you're not prioritizing yourself. You really don't know what are your values. If you would know your values, you're not going to be saying yes to the things that are really not heck yes for you. It goes back to self-worthiness and the needs to trying to achieve and prove to others and validate yourself. So it's beautiful when you really like grasp this concept of abundance in nature and health and relationship. And it's like this richness of life. And when you embody it, that's when you become the magnet to it. Can someone be in abundance if they're in a bad relationship or a toxic one or an unhealthy one or something that just no longer feels good anymore? Is that possible? That's such a great question. And 
you can live and be, have abundance in your life, but you cannot live fulfilled and abundant life. You can have abundance, meaning you can have abundance of time, you can have abundance of money, you can have abundance in health. But I personally been in toxic relationships, so I know that you cannot have abundant and fulfilling life because most of the times you are giving your life to others and you are, you know, making yourself busy for others to please them and people pleasing. And so you cannot live abundant life, unfortunately. So what does someone do who is stuck in that toxic relationship that you talk about that you've been in? I've certainly been in, in one, if not more of those two. And you, you, it's easy to get stuck there. You know, it's easy to kind of be on that hamster wheel of like, oh, things are going to get better and it does get better. And then it dips down again. And you know, that you have that fear of, I can't leave because of money or people are going to judge me or I have no place to go or all of the things that sort of creep in there. How do you work with someone like that? Like what type of work do you do with them to really help them step into their true purpose? And I love the the part in the end that you said, you know, like step into the, your own purpose, right? And step into your own truth. Because when you're in toxic relationship, first where you have to start, you get to realize that your life, it's not true to you. That's like the first step, right? When my clients come to me, I ask them, if nothing ever changes in your life, are you okay with that? Mm. And Ooh, out of- that's a powerful question. Yep. Yep. It is. Because if you would have asked me five years ago, I would not be okay with that. Now, if you ask me, if nothing ever changes, I'm good. Yeah. I'm really good. Like everything that I want, it's extra, like bigger house, bigger car, getting a couple babies, you know, like these are beautiful things to plan and desire, but do I really need them? I'm so happy and fulfilled where I am. My clients are not. And when they realize, okay, so that's the first step asking yourself and like really honest check in if nothing ever changes am i okay with that my clients will say that no many of us in the past would say no okay next step what is something that weighs you down the most because there are many different areas of our life it can be health it can be finances it can be relationships it can be contribution fulfillment of your purpose like different areas right so really look and ask yourself what is the one thing that it weighs you heaviest? I remember when I, when I used to be married, I went to yin yoga for the first time ever. It's supposed to, I'm like, go and do it and hustle and working hard, right? So the in the gym. And then when you put me in a yoga, then I'm supposed to be like holding position for three minutes. I was like, what the heck? Am I uh. supposed to go sleep? <laughs> was like so uncomfortable but I'm like okay I gotta slow down so I went to this yoga and there's like this old teacher and he says right at the beginning of the class whatever weighs you down I want you to put it on the side of the mat because this is your 60 minutes this is your time with you whatever weighs you down put it on the side of the mat you can pick it up later if you want but for right now leave it there my first thought my husband So that, that was heavy, 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 because I was feeling guilty about my own happiness when it didn't include at him, like me going to the yoga when he's at home, you know, like trip guilt and, um, guilt trip. And so that was the first time. So that's what I really tell my clients, ask yourself what weights you down the most. And then ask yourself the third step, what is the safest way to move a little bit away? Because sometimes it's really not the safest, pack your stuff and like, bye, I'll never see you again. And maybe it's not the most logical and safest, right? But what can you do? Can you reach out to the expert? Can you get a mentor? Can you just listen to the podcast? Maybe you can read a book. I remember when I read the codependent no more, right? And like things that you can really educate yourself. So that can be the safest first step, but it's going to give you more confidence, clarity, and hopefully the support that you really need to see. That's the third step. And also what I would add, because we both know it. When you're in it, you don't see it. They're like, well, it's not that bad. Like my ex-husband, he would he was narcissistic, you know, and everything on the outside looks perfect. We're like this perfect mm. couple behind the door. It's like silent treatment, blame game. Like it was terrible, you know, not physical abuse this time, this relationship. So that was a progress kind of, <laughs> right? Like, but that's not a good enough reason to stay either, you know, I just know. because there isn't abuse. 
I know, and that's why I'm sharing. Like there was a progress, but we don't get what we want. We get what we settle on. And I mm. settle on like, oh, it's not bad enough. And he used to tell me like, what do you want? I'm not drinking. I'm not spending money on strip clubs. I'm not playing games like gambling, right? So what else do you want? I'm like, that's your measurement of a good mm. husband? Like throwing in the, the word stuff? So it, yeah, so it was like, you really get to look at your situation and ask yourself if my daughter or my best mm -hmm. friend would be in the same situation, would I be okay with that? What would I tell them? Because very often we are in it and we are like, well, it's not that bad. I don't want to bother people. It's not like that horrible, you know, I can just suck it up. You know, yeah. it's like, we just like bought this and we just have a kids and whatever it is. But you really are playing it small and it's it's killing you slowly inside it's really like suffocating your soul isn't that sad that and you said so many things that are are beautiful in in nuggets of wisdom but it's so sad to me that that is the pattern that we as women often do so we're secondary we're you know, we have that moment of like, we're not worthy or the guilt because you go to yoga. And it's just, it's heartbreaking that we don't, can't put ourselves first, that you have to ask the question, what would you do if your daughter was there, the advice that you would give, because we can't look at it ourselves unless, unless you kind of frame it that way. Are you finding that a lot of women are coming to you or um, with those same issues and concerns and, and sort of lack of being able to really unselfishly put yourself first? Absolutely. Like most of my clients, I would say really nine out of 10, you know, I, I work with some clients that just want to really like expand their business and they already have the foundation and their worthiness. Mm -hmm. But nine out of 10 clients that come to me are really not seeing themselves as worthy. And it doesn't have to be only in relationship. It can be with your kids. Maybe you're a single mom and you are like really not taking care of yourself because you want to be a good mom because now you're feeling guilty because you're in like split family, right? So that's something that I find out on my journey. And it's something that really made a huge difference in my life, like really seeing myself as worthy. And that's why I also created like a mini course for women, you know, unapologetically worthy, because once you have that, everything else in your life will really shift because you are feeling worthy, worthy of being yourself, worthy of saying no, worthy of being abundant, worthy of doing the things that you really love. Right. And, and worthy of walking out of something that simply doesn't serve you without, and you don't have to have a good reason either. Like yep. it, it not being the right place for you is, is a good enough reason. And I think people don't see that and they don't accept that because there's, they need a reason they need to, they need the, the violence or the, there's abuse or there's something that will give them a reason rather than just like this relationship no longer serves me and that's okay. Mm, that's so powerful what you're saying because like you said we are looking at the it's not the worst case scenario so what if you know what I feel like and and let me know about your journey but what I felt on my journey it's like well this is better than the previous one what if there is nothing better than yeah. this and I was afraid to leave because yeah. I didn't want to be alone and then I'm like what if the next partner is worse and I will regret it. And then I had hard time, even when I broke off the relationship, I had really hard time to letting go. We stay in touch. We would go for dinner, see each other. And it's so destructive. I know. I know. And keeping that door open just a crack will never allow you to heal and move forward or even be able to establish boundaries that you follow. And, you know, you asked the, that, the, the question of, um, I, I forgot how you said it, but it's, you know, what if I, what if I never meet someone? What if you do, what if you find yourself in a relationship that's so fulfilling and so abundant and so loving, like imagine, what, what a life like that looks like. And that's what we all deserve. And that's, you know, we really, none of us should be settling for anything less than that. I think. 
No, absolutely. I agree with you. And, you know, that's why I was like kind of asking your opinion, you know, if you ever experienced that, mm -hmm. like this fear of what if what I have, it's the best that I could have, right? Because it's like, oh, I want a bigger house and faster mm -hmm. car and better marriage and more money. And it's always like this striving. But yeah. I also believe that when you do the inner work, you know, you know, you know, yeah. you know, and especially as women, we are so freaking powerful, like our intuition and our mm -hmm. own magic. Like, I absolutely love that. And that's why I love working with women. I used to have male clients like in the past, you know, but I absolutely love and adore working with women because when you see like women, they start to blooming. Oh my gosh, there is no better feeling ever because it's like, they are life bringers, right? Like mm -hmm. many of them. And it doesn't have to mean that they will give birth to child. It can be ideas or helping other women. Mm -hmm. But as women, we came here to be life bringers. So when I can help you to feel better, you will do better in this world. And this world, it's better. So it's this beautiful butterfly effect. And it's, it's amazing. It's such a great feeling. You are bringing light right through the microphone right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's radiating. So, okay. I'm, I pulled something from your website. I want to ask you about, because I thought it was really interesting. You said that the research has proven that around 80% of the 50,000 subconscious thoughts we have in a day are negative ones. Yep. Like, whoa. <laughs> so what do you do about that? I mean, were, were you just all walking around like really miserable? Well, the thing is that the thoughts, most of the thoughts that we're thinking are the same or same or same or same or same or right. So if you are not being intentional and aware, you will keep thinking the same thoughts. And many of us are living in our limiting beliefs because think about it. Your brain, it's not designed to make you thrive an abundant queen. Your brain is here to make you survive and to really like get day by day. And that's how many of us are feeling in our life. I got to get through the day and then I get to the bed. The next day is the same day. So it's going to be same old, same old thing until you will become really intentional. So what can you do when you know this is to really establish yourself intentional morning routine. My morning routine, it's non-negotiable. It's very flexible. Every day it's going to be a little bit different. Some days I journal, some days I meditate, some days I read, some days I just cuddle with my pop, some days I'm scripting, doing cards, whatever but I check in with myself and I have an intention for the day. Like, mm. it's so funny. We started to do it recently. I used to be doing like intention and writing it down. Like, how do I want to feel throughout my day? And what would make me feel accomplished in the end of the day? I don't care about your two never ending to-do list that will never end, girl, I'm mm. sorry. But what would make mm -hmm. you feel accomplished? What is the one thing you would like to finish that you would be like, oh my gosh, I can sleep good now. That was weighing on me. That's what I used to journal. Now, um, we're doing with my boyfriend every single day, 32 ounces of celery juice. So we close our eyes, hold our uh, celery juice, <laughs> and we say like gratitude, what we're grateful for, but also what is our intention. So it's mm. so much fun, you know, like we have so many little rituals. Like every time we are eating, uh, we hold our hands and we say like a uh, little like grace, you know, like I was never like raised like religious or anything. He was raised as Christian and then he departed and then he came back. But grace, it's really for us just saying gratitude and like celebrating uh, things that are working. We do it with every meal. So when you become intentional, everything will shift and also not judging yourself right now. You know, that's I think a big one. It's huge because, oh my gosh, and especially my girls, they love love of attraction manifestation, you know, and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I had a negative thought. Now I'll attract something negative. And they like freak out. I was like, breathe. It doesn't work this way. Right. <laughs> Luckily, it's not like, hey, I had a negative thought. But when I say don't judge yourself, it's because it's your nature. So your first thought, it's just a survivor. Mm -hmm. Your first thought comes from a brain and your brain is here to protect you. And if there, your brain sees something different out of the normal that it knows to be normal for itself, it's going to try to protect you. So that's when we're judging. That's when we're comparing. That's when we're mm -hmm. jealous. So your first negative thought, it's absolutely normal. It's okay. But then you get to choose again. Mm. Most people, they have the negative thought and they go on downward spiral. Yep. 
That's why the high, high numbers, 80%, because it's so easy. Oh my God, they're driving so slow. What the heck is wrong with them? Look at yep. them. Oh, now I cannot turn here. Now I'm late. And it's like, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Now let's file. Okay, take a deep breath and choose again. Because whatever you just send out there, do you want it to come back? Right. Do you really want that energy to come back to you? Probably not. Okay, what am I choosing instead? Instead, I'm choosing to listen to my audio. Instead, I'm choosing to be patient. Instead, I'm choosing to turn into curiosity and compassion. I wonder why they're driving so slow. I wonder, are they scared? I wonder, is something wrong with their car? Instead of like, what happened with this person, right? right. Why they're so slow and then you're mm -hmm. feeling bad. Who are you helping? So first thought, negative, it's okay, choose again. Ah, uh, that's so good. And that takes practice. Like, I think that you, 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 you kind of tuck that away, you file it away. So when that thought comes up, like it definitely takes practice to remember to do that because I think we're all guilty of that spiral. And usually like, I feel like it starts in the car. Someone beeps at you. Like, I think like, just like what you said, someone's going too slow. Someone's riding too close. And then that sort of just sets everything in, in motion. So it's such a great thought. And I love the whole morning ritual. I have several decks of cards that I will pull one every day. And that becomes sort of my intention and mantra for the day. And it works because I had one yesterday that I pulled and it had something to do with really taking care of yourself and taking the time to honor your body. And so when I was getting caught up in my own to-do list, I looked at that card and said, okay, like my card today said that. So I'm going to put, slap the laptop down and go for the walk. I'm going to really remember that. So, you know, I, I love that too, because it's almost like the, whatever you're picking is what you're going to focus on. And I look at it throughout the day too, just to kind of check in and be like, okay, have I, have I tapped into this or did I ignore it? And uh, I just, I love that idea of a ritual. Mm -hmm. So your podcast and um, your company is called Apologetically Abundant. So what does that mean? Unapologetically. Yeah. Abundant. I'm like, I'm like, yeah I'm like, <laughs> Unapologetically. Let's be correct. Yeah, word. we're not apologizing for anything. <laughs> oh, and, you know, it's, it's so fascinating because um, my, when I started my podcast years ago, it was called Be Strong Minded. And it was coming mm -hmm. from the combining the three parts, the being part, the being the strong part, which is your physical body and then the mindset, right? So it was the being spirituality mind and body. And uh, I learned throughout my journey that when I became unapologetic, all of the abundance came to me. So when I became unapologetically me, I created abundant life. I attracted the love of my life. My soulmate mm. clients started a new company. Uh, I have an amazing theme that I'm working with 11 people. And it's just so much abundance came into my life, but it wasn't up until I became unapologetically me. And it doesn't mean being rude or mean or don't mm. care. I care so much and so deeply that I'm not going to waste my time on something or someone who doesn't align with me and my values. Oh my God. I love that. And I love that. And we're going to circle back to divorce because I think that is critical when someone is trying to make a decision that they're making it unapologetically. And it's because it's the right decision for them and not because they're allowing people to tell them what to do or they, or because they're doing something or not doing something because they think it's the right Thing or, or whatever the chatter is outside. So I love that. And I think as women, that's what we do. We apologize for everything. I mean, it's like, it, I mean, how often does someone say like, oh, I'm sorry, but in, before they start talking or um, like we apologize before we even get the words out of our mouth, you know? <laughs> yep. So true. And I have like a few friends and I have a couple of clients in Canada and it's like, every second sentence, it's, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh my gosh. So what I teach my clients is instead, because when you say I'm sorry, you're putting yourself down. And of course there are times to like, you know, apologize. And most of the times like, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm late. I'm sorry. I didn't do the dishes. I'm sorry. I cannot do the dinner. It's like, why you would be sorry about it? It's putting you down. It's putting the other person in a control or in power, in power. I don't use the word control in power. But think about it. If instead of I'm sorry, you say thank you. 
Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for your help with tonight's dinner because I'm busy with the clients until late. Like how beautiful is that? Yeah. Because not only you're feeling empowered, but you're also making the other person feel generous instead of like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Now you're making them feel guilty because they, they feel that you don't feel good, right? So instead of I'm sorry, take a deep breath and say, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for your understanding. I will be five minutes late. Thank you for your help when I'm overwhelmed. And it's so funny. My boyfriend, like we are both NLP practitioners, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you're using the tricks on me, you know? (laughs) I was just going to say, this sounds very tricky. (laughs) But it's fun, you know? It, It can be because it can like when people know or sometimes subconsciously it can like, really like piss them off because like for example my boyfriend he's like thank you like when he's going for example through his business and he's in his moods or something and he was like thank you so much for your patience I'm like which one (laughs) you know so he's thanking me for something he wishes would be true and I did it in the past too I did it like with my ex-roommate you know I told her like Hey, thank you so much for um, sending the payment today. And she was like, I didn't send it yet. You know, I'm like, thank you for the, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> thank you so much for, um, because it was the first, so you're supposed to send the rent, right? So thanking ahead of time for the things that you desire. Thank you so much for uh, picking up the, your dog's poop in the backyard. And she was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> She went out that minute though and picked it up. (laughs) So sometimes she would be like really like upset and aggressive, but it's, it's like when you realize that people are really not playing tricks with you, I'm not manipulating to anyone. I'm just exuding the gratitude for the things that I wish for. What's wrong with that when you think about it? And, and that I think is a super helpful tip when, when you have a spouse and an ex-spouse who are trying to co-parent. Like that's really, really helpful when there's already maybe some animosity. I can imagine someone's running late. Thank you for being so patient. Like, they, yeah. like, like I, I just could see how that would just kind of set the tone for the follow-up interaction where something could go really wrong and becomes like each of them barking at each other turns into maybe it kind of de-escalates things. Absolutely. Because again, it goes back to your energy, right? It doesn't matter what you do or what you say, your energy, it's louder than any Mm word. So if you are sending that energy, like, oh my gosh, I'm late. He's going to be mean again or Mm -hmm. worse words, right? And you're going in this rabbit hole and feeling bad. When you get there, what kind of energy do you think you're exuding? And what do you think he will do or she will do, right? They will be like really reactive. So check in with yourself first. Is the energy I'm sending out their energy I want to get back. Right. Okay. So Petia Kolobova. <laughs> See, I knew I would get that in again. <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue. How do we find you? How does someone work with you? And actually, what do you offer and how, how do you work? So first, let's start with where do we find you, um, your website and social media. And as always, all of this stuff is in the show notes, but also how do, do you actually work with women? Beautiful. So my favorite place, it's on Instagram. That's where you and me now are stacking each other. I just (laughs) love it. I'm always in my story. So there's my life. So I'm always on on Instagram with my name, Petia Kolibova, my website, Petia Kolibova. And Renee will spell it for you because not everybody can just like flow at least, like send it out there. And then I have a a Facebook group for women only, a very safe, beautiful group called Unapologetically Abundant Woman. And it's a beautiful space because not only I train there, I do free trainings there, you know, and I have expert speakers there because I love learning. So we have, you know, like relationship experts, um, Mm. human design experts, astrology, numerology, um, understanding um, your body and health and energy. So I always invite experts. Um, now in my private group, we will have also light language, you know, alchemists. So I always bring like experts. So those are my like favorite places. And to work with me, um, I usually do like 90 days programs for my clients to really build the foundation of their abundance in life. And many of them, they learned it like, oh my gosh, now it's my turn. I want to build my business. So I help them with that too. 
build the foundations. And for that, I would um, email me on hello at petyakolibova.com because I am very selective who I work with. So we would just jump on a call and see if we really match in our energies because I love my clients to life. It's like my connections are really deep and lasting. So I want it to be a hackiest for you, hackiest for me. And I'm open to jump on a free call because come on, if you're a Renaissance person, you're my person. Yeah. Normally I don't offer clarity calls anymore, you know, but I would love to do that for your audience and just give them free clarity call. Just email me or just message me on Instagram or Facebook, wherever, you know, it's your jam. So just message me and I would love to do that and see how I can support you, whether we are good fit or not. I'm always overflowing with, you know, tips and strategies and values. So would love to do that. So there you have it. Petia Kulabova. <laughs> I'm never going to get over this. <laughs> We're going to be friends for life just because like, so I can <laughs> call you up call and just me. say... <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. I loved this chat. Um, you are really just light and love and, and so much good vibes. So thank you. I really appreciate and I'm so grateful for the time that you spent with me and my listeners today. Thank you so much for having me. And especially thank you for the work you are doing. It's so needed. I wish you would be in my life eight years ago, but mm. we're all good. Now I got you. And I absolutely love how you're supporting and helping women these days. Thank you. Thank you, hon.